Philadelphia area where Temple is located, have raved about the Philadelphia Business Journal, has recognized him. He's a big time business guy. He's on an NCA board for Division I strategic vision and planning. He seems to be all over the place and really recognized nationally, but does he fit what we need in College Park? I'm going to back that up a little bit. The NCAA Division I Strategic Vision and Plan Committee is, it's like the committee to be on the NCAA. It's like, it, it's the one that's in charge of most things, most big ideas. So that's a big deal. That means he's got a lot of respect in the industry. As for on-the-field success, there's not much to argue with. In back-to-back -back years, Temple went to the AAC Championship. They won in 2017. Turn Talk with Bruce Bosner. 60 minutes of Maryland athletics and your phone calls at 410-481-1300. Now, here's Bruce Bosner and Turp Talk. Ladies and gentlemen, we have special guests in tonight. The Young Terps, one of the top podcasts in the country, they joined the show for uh, some Terrapin discussion, some other sports discussion, and they'll do a final segment on the search for an AD at the University of Maryland. So I welcome in Mason and Jordan Viner. Welcome in, guys. Thanks for having us, Bruce. Good it's to be here. Second appearance. Hey, Bruce. It's Yes, they like coming in, doing a live podcast tonight. I'm vinerized tonight. I'm vinerized. You're surrounded. Yeah, there's no <laughs> doubt about it. Well, let's start off talking about the main Terp story, which will take place tomorrow, and that is Kevin Herter, who's not attending the NBA draft, though he was invited. Uh, his story has dollar signs written all over it. It's a matter of how much money will Kevin Herter get, where will he land, Lots of speculation. It seems somewhere between about 17 and 25, and we don't know who or where or why. But, guys, let's get your take on Kevin Herter earning $2 million a year. And we saw, and we certainly discussed enough about how good of a shot he was, where his... Uh, faults were maybe in turnovers and well, sometimes on the handle the basket enough right. he didn't really take the team over till late but when he did take over he was uh it was tremendous he could shoot he can rebound he can defend and when the nba scouts talk about him they always bring up the defense and we saw that that magical night in downtown dc when he blocked the shot at the end of the maryland georgetown game and sort of gave the terps the win there the guy can play basketball but the question of where he fits best the nba it's so hard to tell because you don't know what the makeup of some of these teams are going to be however a week, as, yeah. as stephen a would say <laughs> let's each of us go through and make their case as to who would want kevin and where he will wind up and i'll start with one of the young terps Mason Viner. Mason, go ahead. I personally think his best fit will be with the Utah Jazz along in the backcourt with Donovan Mitchell just because it will give him the best chance to be out on the court this season. A lot of people are saying a team like Portland, but the coach there does not like to put in the rookies at all. I just think Utah's his best chance to really get in early and be able to make himself the name in the backcourt along with one of the NBA's rising stars in Donovan Mitchell. And also give him a ton of wide-open shots because Donovan Mitchell is one of the five or six best offensive talents in the league uh, based on last year. So that would be a great home for him. Uh, the other young Terp, Jordan? Well, I still say Mason stole my jazz idea, so I'll pick a different one. All right. um, I'm going to say the Timberwolves. With the Timberwolves, they've really wanted Andrew Wiggins to become their primary scorer, and it never really happened for him. And I know they just signed him for a five-year contract, but they're losing faith in him rapidly. I think Herter could be a good long-term solution on the wing. He definitely has a lot of shooting to give them more spacing so Cat can get it done inside. And I think it'd, it'd be a good fit for him. He fits their timeline well. And Wayne Viner, you're going to surprise everybody because you have him wearing purple and gold. I have him wearing purple and gold. Uh, I think I got this one from somebody at Sports Illustrated. He could fit in there. He could fit in anywhere. But maybe he can play with your guy, uh, LeVar. But they Lonzo. Are, Lonzo. Lonzo. Sorry, wrong ball. Right. It's basketball. Um, he just slides down the draft board a little bit more than everybody had thought. They need some outside scoring. They have somebody who's great with the ball, finds the open players often. 
they need to make those shots. But it's a work in progress because I don't think that team's going to be as we see it right now. Uh, I don't think the year goes by. First of all, uh, I do believe that LeBron's going to L.A. And I think that Kawhi Leonard's going to go to L.A. Mainly because L.A. is about the only team that has talent to offer back to San Antonio. Wait, but if finish. You're talking about Brandon Ingram. You're talking about uh, Kyle Kuzma. You're talking about Randall. And will they get all three of them? I don't know. But to me, those guys going to Popovich would mean a lot. Go ahead. I I think that if you see LeBron on the Lakers, Lonzo's gone. LeBron said he's not dealing with LeVar. Now, I don't know how that will work, but maybe Lonzo's gone if... LeBron shows up. Who cares about Alonzo? I mean, he's just, uh, he's expendable. I thought he was one of your favorite guys. He is. But But you know what? In the NBA, all right, there are no love affairs with guys who aren't named LeBron and KD and Stefan and anybody who's on the Golden State Warriors. Well, I know you love what Golden State does, but you think Pop's a great fit. Popovich. Well, Popovich, what I've seen is, I, I like... I like San Antonio for Kevin Herter. Why? Popovich runs that real spread offense where everybody gets wide open shots. And uh, I think that Herter fits in there well. And who wouldn't want to see Kevin Herter play with arguably one of the best coaches in basketball? Although a lot of people say that time has passed him by. All right, But I think talent has passed him by. Well, this is the first player he lost. Kawhi Leonard, he... he I'm talking about Popovich. He's had other guys that got in disagreements with him. He's had other issues. He's been able to solve all those issues. This is the first time. It's sort of like the first time that Krzyzewski lost a guy who went pro early. You look at Pop and say, everybody stayed there. Now Kawhi Leonard decides he doesn't want to stay there. Why do you think that broke down? Kawhi Leonard and him? I don't know, because he featured Kawhi Leonard, but for whatever reason, Kawhi Leonard just... I think Kawhi Leonard doesn't like the fact that he's been a, in obscurity in uh, San Antonio. He's like a lost soul. Go ahead, Jordan. Well, that's definitely true because one of the s- things that were cited in an article I read about Kawhi Leonard is his shoe contract is paying him $20 million over four years. Lonzo's shoe contract is paying him $20 million over five. And Kawhi Leonard's Defensive Player of the Year last year. Yeah, and not two no years comparison. ago now. There's no comparison. Look, He's got it in his mind that he's leaving, and I do believe that he's leaving. But I'm going to throw a curve at everybody in this room, except Bill, because he doesn't even know what we're talking about. All right. (laughs) (laughs) Who's on first, Bill? All right. This is going to shock you all. If he passes or if he slides down. This is Herter. Right. There's one team I know that would grab him. And I mean grab him and kiss him and choke him and do everything. All right. And that is Golden State. Because, wow, would he fit in there? Get rid of uh, Nick Young, say goodbye to Nick, and put in a guy who isn't so helter-skelter as Nick Young in that process. I think we talked about this off the air one night, that if he got to Golden State and it worked out, he'd be a great salary cap move because the night can't pay everybody. So if he can come in and hit the long ball there, that it gives them flexibility. It could. He's not a shooter in the style of Clay Thompson. He's was not any, as good. Were any of these guys that good when they got the NBA? Other Curry, than Curry, Curry, Curry was. okay, but everybody else seems to learn how to shoot. We've got guys six ten shooting Wall, NBA three. Hey, John Wall could hit a twelve footer when he got to the Wizards. Right, they all got better. Mason, why do you think his shooting improves? And what's Kevin Herter's ceiling if he can shoot even better than he does now? Who knows any of this stuff? Because you see guys like a. Uh, Terrence Ross comes out of Washington. Amazing shooter in college, can't do it in the NBA. It's a whole development of the game. Every day now turns into basketball. 365, you're playing ball. You're working with different guys, shooting in the gym every day. It changes a lot of people, but with Herter, it's always up in the air. He can shoot now, but can he shoot in 10 years? It's that's the beauty of the NBA. We'll we'll be back in 10 years to talk about that. Hopefully. Hopefully. You are listening to Coons Ford Turp Talk this Wednesday night and every Wednesday night for the past 11 years here on CBS Sports Radio 1300. So, so, well, I was going to say there is one bad thing that happened that. uh, What? Well, uh, I know we touched on it before, but the passing of uh, Jordan McNair. 
and uh, that service was today, according to the kids. Look, there's a lot that has to be deciphered, and what happened, how it happened, we don't know anything yet. Uh, Damon Evans has like turned it over to a review board, I think, yep. and it's going to be uh, judged as to what happened. But you know, it does it does matter as to what happened. Does Maryland? All practices now are voluntary. Did I read that? Well, this is the off season, so okay. the, it's it's sort of I'll go with extra voluntary. That they've really toned it down. There's so many upset kids, and I can see why you'd be upset. And I guess I go through the review process, and we'll see what actually happened. But however and whatever, uh, the funeral was today. It's just a sad day for all Terrapin fans and anybody associated. Yeah, with uh, Jordan. even more so in the Baltimore area, uh, being from Randallstown and Jordan. Have you heard anything special about that? About the funeral? About the funeral. No. Mm -hmm. No, I have not. I have not. I just, I, I did, I thought it was tomorrow, and then I was told it was today. Uh, it's a very sad day for Maryland. Right. Very, Sorry. very sad day. Uh, you threw me off on the basketball here. So my own th my own thought process says he winds up as a spur eighteen. I heard a uh, Aldridge. What's his name? D A from uh, the NBA. I can't think of his name. David Aldridge. Yeah, David Aldridge. He said Herder and Pop born. They were born to be you know together. Uh, and, and there's some European guy named Russo or La Russo, who uh, San Antonio wants, but they're not going to go after him mm -hmm. because he's a project. Mm -hmm. Herter is not a project. I believe he comes in ready to play. I don't know. Ready the to dribbling, play. The dribbling will be an issue. Can he be strong on the ball in the NBA? Can he drive the basket? Is he going to be asked to? If you bring him as a spot-up shooter and you just leave him there. Well, that depends well, on that the means situation. Well, that means that he's not NBA ready right now. Fully NBA ready well, if he's no, just a spot-up shooter. But if that's what somebody needs... He can be a 3 and D player tomorrow. Okay. Then well, that is a position people need. Let's just say this. He's not going to the D-League. No, right? no, he's not going to the D-League. Now, there are some Terps from your favorite sport right. that are just lighting up the Pro League in the MLL. Major League Lacrosse, Maryland, really getting the job Nico done. Nico Amato is your best example. He's certainly been arguably the best goalie in the MLL. Rambo's done fantastic. China Chuck always does fantastic. Colin Heacock, been a tremendous asset. Uh, Timmy Rotance, first game hat trick for Charlotte. Another Charlotte player. Another Charlotte. Now, when Charlotte's Char coming in July 21st. And for all you Maryland fans out there who want to see a ton of Maryland, ex Maryland national champions or near national champions, they'll be here on that day. Now, where, what arena were we in when the whole uh, behind the Maryland bench, it was every former player you could think of? Was that at, at Annapolis? When they went to the Sweet yeah, 16? Yeah, yeah, that was. Oh, yeah. Heacock led the troops, but everybody was there. Everybody it, was well, there. Well, they won't all be there for this game, but there'll be a lot of them there. And Dave Cottle's taking over the Bayhawks. Not too many Bayhawks. Not too many Terps on the Bayhawks, but the key one is uh, Nico Amato, who was just a, as good as they came. And some, you know, one or two championships for Amato, and he might have gone down as the best ever, but he wasn't able to. Just one or that. two? Well, one yeah, anyway. One would have done just it. Just one. But, uh, go ahead, Mace. You know, goalie in the MLL is a really weird thing. Because Burnlore started on the bench. Nico Amato's been on the bench for the past four years. And now they're like the two best goalies in the league. But they were on the bench only two or one year ago. Nobody comes in that league and takes over as a rookie. Not even uh, Pinnell. Pinnell had a good year when he came in. Now he's the stud of the league. But uh, And when you consider the Rambo as the third leading scorer... That says it all. It does. But so the, before we get off of lacrosse, All-American Weekend's coming up. What yes. do you have planned for that? Next week, uh, next Friday, we'll all be there, I think. All of us will be there covering all the Maryland recruits. And for inside the Crease Lacks, we'll be covering Hopkins, uh, Loyola. I'm not sure who else is going to be there. But the, the local guys, mm -hmm. the recruits, if they give us the rights to talk to them, we always have the rights to talk to Maryland. Well, I'm sure they will. Jordan got out there last year. How did you enjoy interviewing all of those Maryland recruits? It was really, really hot that day. It That's honestly really my first hot. memory. It was I was dying. <laughs> yeah, but we were all impressed with one of our largest lacrosse uh, 
takes ever with oh, Bubba sure. Fairman. Bubba Fairman has been hot on the Turp Talk videos. Uh, Bruce talked to Bubba before Maryland departed for Boston in the Final Four. That's got a thousand views. I mean, Bubba is a hot lacrosse property. Yeah, no doubt. And he'll. Uh, it's interesting to see what's going to happen with Maryland. Got four new attackmen coming in, and they got a couple other on the bubble, and we won't go into that. But uh, one of them who I know pretty well, but uh, we don't really. We don't, we don't know who that is yet, but uh, <laughs> we'll see what happens. I, I might. I didn't know that was a done deal. So no, what it's else? Not done. It's uh, not all done. right. It's what else do we done. have? It's not even near done. Well, I got to talk about it. You guys are going to get real upset. But to me, the biggest debacle this year is the failure to re-sign Barry Trotz. See, I thought you were going to say Phil Mickelson hitting the ball twice. Well, that's that's no, it's the, Jr. That's the most imba- embarrassing. Okay. No, no, Jr. Smith is the most embarrassing. What yeah, Jr. Right Smith there. do? He when he ran, he got the rebound in the free throw in he game one. He the score game was over. Yeah, yeah and he ran shot. out. I remember that was the greatest mm-hmm. internet mem thing. Meme? Oh, Meme. I'm old, Man. I'm old. I'm just uh, bothering no, you guys. To me, how you could not re-sign Trotz after what happened after this team labored for how many years? 43? 43 years in the desert. And Mason said to me they were one game away from... Uh, from, from letting him go. From uh, letting him go. But you know what? He's at the... When you have to win a Stanley Cup, it's very rare that you just go... Easy, 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 easy. You always face a tough series. Of course. It's the toughest thing to win out there. So that factor you have to put aside because they didn't. And I thought that the way they grew as the playoffs grew was exponential. It was just unbelievable how they became such a great team. And now they're saying, well, Trotz, who was the assistant coach, had a lot to do with it. Todd Reardon. Yeah. All right. Well, Jordan, this is your— Why hasn't he been named the coach yet? They're going to go through their process, but Jordan follows this stuff even more than I do. What's your take on Barry Trotz moving on? Barry Trotz was one game from being fired in December. If they lost the Minnesota Wild on December 10th, he was fired. Okay, but they won. But they won. But I don't know how much had to do with Barry Trotz. If you talk to the players, and Tom Wilson had a podcast episode where he kind of went on this, Todd Reardon was one of the driving forces behind their growth. He may be the driving force, and all the defensive players who he coached all speak volumes about how great a coach he is. And I think that when it comes down to it, or the the phrase you use is, they decided to keep James Franklin this time. Right. In a Maryland phrase, they fired Fridge and they kept Franklin. But they've also never been completely sold on big coaches. They've hired guys that haven't coached before, they keep it low cost because they that's what they believe in. Well, Bruce brought up the week before they won that they'll pay him three or four million dollars, and that's when I said, Hold on, they don't pay that much. I didn't I don't think this is about money. They made it out to be about money in the end. I think, I it's, think about, it's that they had Todd Reardon under contract and Barry didn't like that. I think I, it's about the term. I don't really think it's about the money, and I think it was about Reardon. It was about how many years he wanted and about that he's got this assistant coach sitting behind him they just doesn't like. Look, they, they made a move a lot of teams don't have the guts to make, and that's not re-signing him because he wanted a f- four- or five-year deal. That's the official reason. They didn't even get into the money aspect of it. But uh, a guy, but here's the way I look at it, and you guys follow the Caps more than I do, but he won two President's Cups, is that right? That's right. That's the trophy for the best record in the league. Right. And he won a Stanley Cup. And all right. we all know what that's for. All right. And what was the fourth year? Did he do anything special the that year besides win 50 games? No, but three out of four ain't bad. Right. So the point I'm trying to make is, who are you going to get better? And the hardest thing to do in sports is to repeat. All right. Not for the Golden State Warriors, for, but for every other team. And the, the twicks and turns that comes along the way... We'll see. Are they right. going to sign Wilson? Are they going to sign uh, John Carlson? John Carlson. Orpic is probably gone. Is that if correct? If they can move him, he's very expensive and he's old. But no matter what happens, they won. No doubt. They won I'm the not, Stanley Cup. I'm not taking that away from him. You got mad at me when I asked Beninati about the problems that are ahead. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to. I'm about ready to look at it. Tonight's the awards ceremony. How many times have you watched the game so far? Five. Five? The uh, whole game or like the last period? Uh... Watched the whole game two and a two three times, and I've paged through it. But I like watching that championship game. Yeah, I, I, agree I even with you. went back and watched one of the the game. 
three in Columbus. So it, I've been every game's been on every night, and I've watched right. parts of all of them. Uh, but uh, look, it was a great run, great for DC, uh, great for ice hockey. And now you worry about next year. Is that quick? After tonight. After tonight. After tonight. All right. Well, all right. We'll go easy on that. All right. With that, we'll go out to our first break. This is Bruce Posner. Haven't got to fill yet. I might have to wait till Saturday. We'll see. Uh, back in a few minutes here on CBS Sports Radio 1300. Welcome back to Coons Ford Terp Talk. Call 410 481 1300 now. Once again, here's Bruce Posner. All right, back here on segment two of Coons 4 Turp Talk. And as always, for the last 11 years, we have my good buddy, Dennis Kalatsis, on the phone. Dennis, welcome in. Hey, Bruce. Thanks for having me on. Hey, always a pleasure, Dennis. Well, we've uh, really expired the Kevin Herter talk about where he's going to go tomorrow. So we go back to uh, the Ravens. What is new on the Ravens front? And... It seems like Lamar Jackson is gaining steam around town. Yeah, Lamar uh, took the uh, first team reps at the last practice uh, the entire day, and he actually shined. It wasn't the stage wasn't too big for him. He had command of the huddle. He displayed great leadership. His accuracy was better. His footwork was better. So the young man's looking real, real good. So we'll see what happens. He's certainly the future. But right now, it is also clear that uh, Joe Flacco is the best quarterback on the roster. He's healthy for the first time in several years. His knee's better, his back is better, he's developing some great chemistry with the receivers. So uh, some great things uh, are, are, you know, for the Ravens uh, on the horizon for the season. What, what's your take on RG3? Do you keep him as a backup, or is it just too much to uh, take up a spot with a guy who's probably not going to play? Well, the, the key with him is he's a cheap backup, Bruce. He's not going to cost the team a whole lot of money. So I think it may be prudent for them to hold on to him for one year. You never know what's going to happen. Uh, I guess he's similar in build and, and athleticism as, RG, as uh, Lamar Jackson. So I think the, the business thing to do is to hold on to RG3 for at least one more season and perhaps more so into the future as the team decides what to do with Joe Flacco and his, and his backloaded contract. Well, due to the fact we have three Redskin freaks in the house today, I'll let Jordan, <laughs> I'll let Jordan Viner comment on RG3. Well, yeah, he's, he's told me about him before. Mason, I'm uh, sorry. We're, we're talking about insurance now, not not uh, as a starting caliber quarterback. But speaking of the Redskins, look, if Joe Flacco has a really good year or, or a decent year, they could also trade him much like the Chiefs did with Alex Smith to the Redskins. That would be interesting. Yeah, Dennis, I was going to ask, if things start to go south this season for the Ravens, do they look at Lamar Jackson? Do they look at RG3? Do they try and start to get away from Flacco, or do you think they're going to stick with him throughout the whole year? Yeah, I, I, if, I, if I'm them, I'm stick with him throughout the whole year, and I hope he has a very good year because that's a good problem to have. If you have a young, hungry quarterback waiting on the wings and you have a proven veteran who's won a Super Bowl, I think it, it, it gives him more options as the year progresses. Now, if Joe Flacco has, a, a, again, a good year, he's still uh, 33 years old, he still has plenty of good football left in him, uh, he could be uh, a good trade bait. He may net him you know, a first and a third at some point. I think that would be the best case scenario for the Ravens. I think it will be, will be bad for the Ravens if Flacco doesn't play well and he diminishes his market value. I think uh, that's why I'm rooting for him to have, to have a good year for a number of reasons. You know, I'm sitting here looking at this schedule. I don't know if you've studied it yet, but how in the world, the second week and fourth week, we're at Cincinnati and at Pittsburgh. What is that, like the booby prize? Well, no. There's, look, there's no, there's no uh, great schedule in the NFL. Every team, every fan base will have its grapes about the schedule. It's just the way the cookie, cookie crumbles, Bruce. So, so you know, every schedule's got its strengths and weaknesses. Uh, they do have a, a rough start with some road uh, road games, but it does become favorable as the season progresses. But uh, good teams figure it out. They find a way to win on the road. They find a way to, to figure out uh, long stretches away from home. And, uh, look, it's just another test for the Ravens. Game of the year besides Pittsburgh, which is always the game of the year, is Drew Brees comes to town. <laughs> you know what? I I still think it's uh, it's Pittsburgh home and away. Uh, the, the Saints are look they're going to be very very powerful, very good. I'm glad we're playing them here versus at the, you know, at the Superdome. Uh, but the schedule look it's it's a fun schedule. It's, uh, hopefully they can put away last year's politics behind them and focus on football and uh, and you know give us a really good product. Uh, but look, it, it should be a very good season for the Ravens. Hopefully they can stay healthy and come out of training camp in great health. The offensive line has certainly has got to gel into mesh, but I, I think their ability to run the ball will also be wonders for the for the offense. Bruce, so, uh, Kenneth Dixon can come back from his uh, year-long hiatus, and uh, 
Uh, Alex Collins, uh, you know, with a year under his belts and a year in the weight room with the Ravens, if he can continue to be what he was, uh, they certainly have enough. I think they could be a surprise team in the playoffs this year. I think they need to be a surprise team in the playoffs this year if John Harbaugh hopes to, to hold on to his position as head coach of the Ravens. Well, the most stunning battle for position, as far as Maryland fans go, is it looks like it's D.J. Moore versus Torrey Smith for the other wide receiver in Atlanta. Uh, Carolina? Carolina. 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 Yeah, they'll, look, they'll both find a place on the field. Uh, D.J. Moore, you know, he's talented. He's still a rookie. I, I think he'll do his best work in a slot. Torrey Smith has a limited route tree. Maybe he runs three or four routes and runs them real well. He'll give the team... The Panthers are a different dimension, but certainly they're going to still, that's another team that's going to try to run the ball uh, with McCaffrey and whatnot. So, uh, look, uh, those guys will find a way on the field. They'll be fine, but I think they'll complement each other very well. It's, I think it's a big plus for DJ to go there and have have Tory there because Tory is like the big brother kind of guy. Yeah, Tory, look, Tory is, is, is well spoken. Uh, Tory is very socially involved. Uh, he's got a great head on his shoulders. I think uh, he's going to use uh, football to, as a form to springboard to greater things. But right now, I think helping DJ Moore transition to the NFL, I think he'll welcome that uh, that challenge and, and to become a mentor for the young man. Look, the Panthers are not that many years removed uh, from a Super Bowl right appearance, and they have the quarterback, they have the defense, and uh, they could be a team uh, to be reckoned with this year in the playoffs. Yeah, there's a lot of teams that are taking this offseason to improve their stadium presence for the fans. They're looking at lower prices for the food items. They're trying to make people come out to the stadium. Do you think the Ravens, I know with the new food prices, do you think it's going to help get people out yeah, there? Yeah, I think the new food prices helps a lot. I really do. I think, yeah. it's a, I think it's a big factor that a guy, you always have the feeling when you're a Ravens game, like, you know, holy cow, am I going to leave here with a dollar in my pocket? <laughs> You know? Yeah, you're going to be there for you know, for four hours. Mm-hmm. You're going to get thirsty. You're going to get hungry. You're going to spend money. But but Dwayne's point: not only have Ravens uh, reduced their food prices, but they also have new video boards now in the corners of the end zones up high. Uh, they're putting escalators, I believe, in the south uh, and the north uh, end zones this year. Uh, that'll help you know people like myself in their fifties get up to the upper deck uh, a lot easier with the escalators. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. But I think for them to enhance the fan experience to bring them back to the ballpark. The Ravens have, have done more than most teams in the league in terms of attracting fans back to the stadium, and I applaud them for that. Yeah, no, I do too. And the most important thing they did was realize that they were playing the most boring brand of football that could even exist, even in victory. And uh, I think they've livened up the team a little bit with Jeremy Macklin and uh, a lot of what they've done and bringing in Lamar Jackson. And uh, I did hear somebody really just crash the idea of using him in different uh, special sets. Yeah, I, I agree with that. By, that by it the never way. works. It never know? works. Yeah, it, it doesn't work. You can choose a young man. Uh, he gets labeled as a running quarterback, which is the worst thing you could do to him. He's coming out of a pro-style offense in Louisville under Rick Petrino, so you don't, want to, you don't want to change that. You don't want to change his mechanics. You don't want to change his footwork. Uh, all he, do, he needs some repetitions in a pro-style offense. He's not a, he's not a trick quarterback, if you know what I mean. So, and look, the other thing I like about the pick of Lamar Jackson, he has. There's no other position that you can you can pick in the first round of the NFL draft that energizes the entire team other than the quarterback. Right? Think about it. His impact is team wide because he gets everybody excited, particularly with his athleticism and what his ceiling could possibly be. Yeah, there's no doubt. So let's get to talk about Coons Ford a little bit. What do you got going on there, uh, uh, Dennis? And uh, end of the year sale, or is it always a sale? Well, th- th- this is the, the 4th of July Independence Day sale, Bruce, again, where we're supported by Ford Motor Company to have phenomenal incentives. You can bet we'll get 0% for 72 months back on the, on the hood of these cars, plus cash back. We have a big, big selection. I mean, I'm getting seven or eight truckloads a day. And uh, the thing is, when you have over a thousand new cars and trucks and SUVs in stock, Bruce, over 200 vehicles, used vehicles, you got to move them, right? It's one thing to have them, but can you pressurize yourself? You got to you got to sell them, right? So that puts good pressure on myself and my staff. We have to price them right. We sell them nationwide. People fly in from all over the country every single day to take advantage of the savings. So if people are flying in from New York and, and Georgia and Florida and and um, the state of Washington, even right. What should the local people do, right? Come run and get the first selections. You know, take whatever you want. You know, you get the pick of the of the crop, so to speak. Yeah, no doubt. And July fourth, we got a special barbecue meal that day. 
Yeah, we'll have a cookout. We're, we'll be open nine to nine as usual. I, I don't even know what date is. Tuesday, Wednesday this year doesn't matter. We're, I think it's Wednesday. I, yeah. Yeah, it's we're, Wednesday, we're, July fourth, and that's yeah, a it's separate holiday. Week. Look, middle of the week, nobody's going away. It's not like it's a Friday or Saturday where people take a long weekend. Right smack in the middle of the week, uh, we expect to be busy. We'll advertise heavily. We'll be all over the TV set driving folks to our website, coons.com. Uh, will they come out and save thousands, and then they can go and have their barbecues or whatever you have that day. All right. And, of course, tomorrow I will be on Coons Ford uh, on the channel Up to Dial on the Coons Show, so the Sunday Sports Voice at 430. And, Dennis, tell everybody where they can reach out to you, my friend. Well, my cell phone's the best place, Bruce, 410 218 Zero three three seven. Also, our website www.coonsbaltimore4.com. And I want to give a shout out to your producer Bill. He does a great job, and uh, I might have to steal him from you. Uh oh, uh oh. Well, I tell you, it won't be tough with what he makes. <laughs> All right. he, he, he might be my number one draft pick, so he's doing a great job. All right, so, thanks a lot, my friend. Great, great show. Thanks a lot. Go Ravens, go Terps. All right, uh, there you go, Bill. You're in demand. Right now, we have to worry about our free agents. Yeah. Yeah, so, the man, all right. He sort of looks like Barry Trotz a little bit. Yeah, he's got the Trotz look. You yeah, know? a little. Hey, I was surprised that Trotz was able to lift the... Uh, the 35 pounds of Lord Stanley's Cup. Did you see when Ovechkin kind of helped him until he realized he could do it? Yeah. Well, he's, a, he's an old... I mean, if we won the Stanley Cup, we'd probably try and help you and make sure you could get the... I, I tell you what, I wouldn't lift it, all right? I would just... I'd admire it, but I wouldn't lift it. I might drink out of it, you know? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, what a, what a now that trophy stays in the area for a year or for, for eight months or something for is it one hundred eighty five days? Uh, yeah, hundred something days until the next season gets rolling for real. And, and that season starts when October third. We raise the banner, right? And uh, I saw they put out their preseason schedule, and I hear they're selling season tickets where it's uncontrollable, and. Uh, what the hell? A hot dog will be twenty dollars over there next hey, year. <laughs> all you need to do is win, and that just proves it for any team around here, winning, including the Maryland Terrapins. Yeah, winning is everything. Uh, there's no doubt about it. And right now, my Orioles are not winning. No, but we that do. Was, that was ugly last night. I have to tell you, five to one, fifth inning. We were rolling along, and you know the Nationals are not one of these great. You know, eight runs in any team. They're a great team. Don't get me wrong. Did I They're see? Okay. Wait a minute. Did I see? That Bryce Harper is batting 220 or something? He has been in a horrible slump. And then the, one of the Washington thoughts is, go ahead and let Bryce become a Yankee. Get Manny Machado if you can. Did you? Did anybody else see that uh, stat that if Mike Trout went zero for his next 40, his OPS would still be higher than Chris Davis? Well, Chris Davis is having one of the worst years ever. But pretty soon, you know, they'll start calling Bryce Harper or, uh, Bryce Davis because he's batting 212 and he thinks he's going to get $40 million. Or what's that? Four hundred? What's he looking for, Jordan? Four hundred million? Four hundred million. Yeah. But hey, another school of thought is just let him keep slumping and resign for the cheap next year. Oh, he isn't going to go with the cheap no. with Boris as his agent. He's not going the, for the cheap. He's not, it'll be it'll be so come up with some injury like uh, bruised ego. It? Yeah, bruised ego <laughs> or broken hand or whatever. What do you think about the broken hand? LeBron's broken hand? Yeah, I mean I, obviously it was. I mean it wasn't. I didn't watch enough of it to. It was over. It was so over. That, yeah, but it wasn't like it wasn't like he played horrible with a broken hand. I don't know how you can play basketball with a broken hand. How anybody know how broken his hand was? His guys? hand was um, we we'll call it chubby. It, it was pretty swollen. It looked broken to me. Well, he still played unbelievable. He had that ball where he passed to himself. Yeah, and that was a move. He's still the greatest. All right, with that, we'll go out to our second break. This is Bruce Posner back in a few minutes for a session with the Young Terps. On CBS Sports Radio 1300. This is Coons Ford Term Talk. Call 410 481 1300 now. Once again, here's Posner. Bruce Posner. Ladies and gentlemen, I present part of Red Turtle Productions on their own, though, and what they say represent their opinions. And I'm <laughs> always listening. All right. The Young Terps, Jordan and Mason Viner. Well, thanks for having us today, Bruce. And well, a report came out today, Jordan, that Maryland has narrowed down the AD search to three people. And who are they? Well, from our good friend Don Marcus, the three finalists are current Temple Athletic Director Patrick Kraft, former Tennessee and Kansas State Athletic Director John Curry, and our current Acting Athletic Director Damon Evans. Jordan, let's start with the current Temple Athletic Director with a doctorate in sports management, Patrick Kraft. Well, Patrick Kraft has 
a meteoric rise, to put it lightly, in the athletic directing business. He started out as the assistant director of sports at Indiana, the senior associate athletic director of sports at Loyola Chicago, deputy director at Temple, and in 2015, he was named athletic director at Temple University. Now, this is a guy that people around the Philadelphia area where Temple is located have raved about. The Philadelphia Business Journal has recognized him. He's a big-time business guy. He's on an NCAA board for Division I strategic vision and planning. He seems to be all over the place and really recognized nationally, but does he fit what we need in College Park? I'm going to back that up a little bit. The NCAA Division I Strategic Vision and Plan Committee is its like the committee to be on NCAA. It's like it, um, it's the one that's in charge of most things, most big ideas. So that's a big deal. That means he's got a lot of respect in the industry. As for on-the-field success, there's not much to argue with. In back-to-back years, Temple went to the AAC Championship. They won in 2017. The, 16. So, sorry, 16. My bad. They went to the NCAA Tournament on at-large bid in 2016. They've been ranked for the first time in 11 years in women's basketball, ranked for the first time ever in men's soccer. I mean, he just, they succeed under him. Yeah, and along with record-breaking GPAs in the classroom, it really seems like a guy that Maryland wants. They get it done in the classroom, they're good on the field, and he seems to be a really good business guy, which is one of my criteria for the next athletic director. But you don't love him. I don't love him because the big school... Is not there. It's not on the resume. A little bit at Indiana, but mainly Loyola, Chicago, and Temple. I'm not really in love with them. But none of these three guys have really stuck out to me like I really want that guy. I, I would agree with you. And yeah, the the fact he's only been, only been at private schools is a bit concerning. But as far as resume goes, it's he's pretty good so far, I'd say. Yeah. Oh, this is Wayne. I just want to add in. He's also had to compete in a pro sports town. So you're talking about Temple. They have to sell against the Eagles, the Sixers, and that's a big deal at Maryland, don't you think? Oh, that's definitely... Well, go ahead. They play in Lincoln Financial Field, and their seat's covered. They've had one game where I've seen a lot of people there. They played Notre Dame. Both teams were in the top 10 in one of their AAC title years. You can say that, but at the same time, it's still Temple. It's not like a big-time Maryland program that can really sell. Well, in his first year at Temple, and we need to move on to the next guy soon, but I want to get this in, they had the largest attendance gain in FBS in 2015-16, to and their attendance has spiked in football. They got game day in 2015. I mean, they've really grown under him, and I, I would be pretty happy if he was our guy. Now to the biggest debate point on this list, the former Tennessee Athletic Director, John Curry. I keep saying Tennessee and Kansas State because, well, everybody knows what happened to Tennessee last year. Kansas State, he was at for eight years, and his resume there was impeccable. They, Kansas State made one tournament in the last 14 years before he arrived. They've made six of the last nine. He brought back Bill Snyder, which has given them to seven straight bowl games, including two BCS Bowls. They, and this is the big one for me, under budget, seven out of nine years, and He's just amazing at fundraising. They've quadrupled their fundraising under his tenure. So, wait a minute. He left Kansas State to go to Tennessee? Yeah. yeah. And then what happened? Everything went wrong that could go wrong. Butch Jones didn't work out. The fans there said that he was a yes man. They were even on the Don Marcus Twitter saying today that do not hire this man. He's a yes man. He doesn't do anything for himself. And he mismanaged Tennessee with the Greg Schiano situation. He just didn't understand what he was working with there. And that's what really did him in. Yeah, Tennessee for him was a disaster. I'm not going to sugarcoat that. Um, the Greg Schiano hiring, that was the first time, and I'd like Wayne to weigh in on this actually, that was the first time I've ever actually seen fans just rebel, straight out rebel. Well, you've always said it's about the fans. And if no fans, there's no money. And with no money... Well, you got a problem. In Tennessee, they lost the fan base to the point that the state legislature got involved. It said, don't hire Shiano. They had to rescind the offer. It's the, Yeah, it was one of the biggest. That may be the biggest debacle going back to the beginning of last year was the Tennessee hiring. But if we go back to Kansas State, he won Athletic Director of the Year in 2013. Yeah, but that's not what it's about right now. Yes, it is, because I think we're a lot closer to being Kansas State than we are Tennessee. Tennessee is one of the top 10 football fan bases in the country. But when hiring one of these people, you have to look at what their most recent body of work was. Right now, for John Curry, it was a big mess. He messed up big time. 
He hired the wrong guys. He didn't fire Butch Jones fast enough. That's where he really lost the fan base. People have been calling for Butch Jones' head at Tennessee for the last, since he was hired almost. And he didn't pull the trigger fast enough on him. Then he goes out and tries to hire Greg Schiano, which was just a failure to know what the fan base wanted. And now he's looking for a job in Maryland. Is that the guy you want? It kind of is. How can you say that? If the fans did not like the man, this man went to Tennessee and the fans went after him. They did not like him. They did not like what he did there. How can you want him for our program? What do you, what do you want, Mason? Who, okay, who do you want then? Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, Let me say one thing. Let's talk about the guy who's going to get the job. All okay. Right, most likely. All right. According to Bruce, the job is already sealed up. No, in the I didn't say that. David Evans. But he's the right guy. All right. In my opinion, without question, because of his history of success at Georgia. And before we get into Damon Evans, when he was on the show, he pointed out one of my biggest issues, Who? Damon Evans, was the scoreboard on top of Gossett Team House. He said that needs to be changed. That's the best thing that I think he said especially when he was on our show. Okay, we've got a few minutes here, so what's the case for Damon Evans? Oh, Damon Evans was, has had one interesting ride. He started out at, uh, in compliance at Mizzou, somehow got from there to assistant commissioner of the SEC, which is an incredible jump in my opinion, As was the associate AD at Georgia, was a Georgia AD for six years, um, was let go from Georgia due to an incident, and since 2014 he's been at Maryland in some capacity, and at Georgia, no one talks about this, he had the most successful athletic program in the country. They had the biggest gross in 2015, oh, sorry, 2005 with $24 million surplus. $24 million is not bad. Bruce, you've met him. Is there any surprise that this guy can jump to the top of the heap? There's no doubt. I think he's, he's definitely the right guy. And there's other reasons I say that. From what I understand, and I've never been told this personally, but I've been told by a lot of people, the coaches love him at Maryland. And that's, a, and, and that's a big start. And if the coaches are in his corner, if DJ Durkin's behind him and uh, all the other... Well, John likes him. John Tillman. John Tillman likes him. But, I mean, you need to have that. But especially about football. It's really about football. Don't you guys think that that's what it's about? Maryland's got the other sports kind of covered. Even with all the lack of success lately in basketball, no, none of us here would be totally shocked if we came out and had a great year in hoops this year. It could right. happen. So, could guys, happen. So, what does is, what is he bring to the football table? And why haven't they given him the position? That's what I don't understand. Well, like with the Capitals and with any team, due process is needed. You have to go through. you got to see what else For is the out state, there. The Capitals don't have to do it because the Capitals are a private Well, company. it's a public appearance kind of thing. You don't want to look like you're just giving the guy the job because it's a bad look. It doesn't makes it look like he didn't earn it. This way, we have two other decent candidates, and we're putting him against them, and I think he's still going to win. Some others have asked what happened to Jeff Hathaway. Did we go after Joe Castiglione, who's the AD at Oklahoma? Any background on that? Um, Hathaway's at Hofstra. I haven't heard anything about that. I don't know why they'd go after Castiglione, because Oklahoma's like a top-five job in the country. Yeah, and for me, with those two guys, Hathaway, it didn't really work out at UConn. Castellone, Jordan said it best, Oklahoma top five job. That's Two minutes happen. left, wrap it up. Who's going to get the job, and when do they make the announcement? For me, Damon Evans will get the job. It's, He's been here. He knows what goes on here. He knows how the whole thing runs. And to me, neither of the other two candidates jump off the page. So Damon Evans gets it because he knows what's going on here, and he's already got a grasp on the Jordan? situation. Damon said the inside track the entire time. Damon Evans gets the job, I'm going to say, in two weeks. All right, that sounds good. Remember to listen to the Young Terps podcast. You can find that on Terp Talks with all the great videos and everything else we have. Bruce? Yeah, uh, it was a good segment, and you guys are obviously up on it. Uh, it sounds to me like the guy from Temple has a chance. I, I really like him. He's, I can't imagine he, the guy from Tennessee who was dismissed uh, yeah. and had all the negative pub gets the job. Well, But, of course, you never know. The guy from Temple's body of work definitely will sell him to a big program. I just don't know if Maryland's the right one. Yeah, look, it's a it's a monster job, and I don't like the fact that the team's been running without a captain of the ship in the past year. Even though he had that title, he really wasn't the athletic director. He was the interim athletic uh, they director. Actually, they now call him the executive athletic director. I mean, they, So what's on tap for the Sports Maven on Saturday? I know we have some golf to do. Yeah, we're going to talk a lot about that. I'm going to have to stand on to talk about the Orioles, I think, because I'm not sure the Orioles are worth— at this point, I don't know. We got to delve into it. They're not. 
you know, something's got to give. And I want to leave this one editorial comment before we go. People are killing the Orioles for their attendance. I beg to differ in saying that if this team draws $2 million with a team that's going to lose 112 games, you've got to credit the people of this city for going to see him play. Because there's no bags on the head. There's none of that stuff. And this team is just downright bad. And people are still showing up. Not in the numbers that you want, but they're still showing up. And it is, uh, it's it's a credit to the love of the team in and, this team. And obviously, you're sticking with them, and you've been there a long time. Yes, and uh, you know what? You made a, You guys made a great point. Manny could wind up as a senator or a national. He really could. If Bryce Harper keeps screwing up, they might send their money wisely after Manny. You never know. 35, 350 for 10, you know? It might be the one. That's it, guys. We're out of time. Saturday is Sports Maven. I'm going to have a lot to say about Phil Mickelson and uh, a great tournament. Brooks Kepka with a great win. Guys, thanks a lot for coming in. You do a great job. Check out their podcast on TerpTalk.com. And uh, they're on podcast number 38. And they're fantastic. All right, everybody. Have a good night. Drive safely. We'll see you Saturday morning.